Right now, when it comes to successful one-hand no-thumb bowling, the person everyone will think about first is Tom Doherty. But the first person to really be successful doing it this way was Mike Miller. And since there is really no one online talking about how to bowl this way, when I decided to change how I bowl to one hand, no thumb, the only way I could learn is to go on YouTube and look at Tom Doherty and Mike Miller. So this video will be what I picked up from watching Mike Miller. Short disclaimer, this is a non-professional review from a non-professional bowler, non-bowling coach. I'm just some random guy on YouTube. So if you disagree with me, fine, good for you. I'm not saying this is the way it is or this is the way other people should do it or these are the other things people should pick up. I'm just some random guy who went from bowling this way without my thumb the very first day to bowling this way now. On this video, which I slowed down and zoomed in on, we can see him putting his hand into the ball, and we can see that he's really digging in. On this shot, I, I froze. He's basically at the second joint. You know, if someone has big hands and they're able to go just true fingertip and hold the ball and control it without their thumb, that's fine. That's good for them. I've done it both ways. And when you go deeper, when you go down to that second joint, you can really grab the ball and hold it and control it a lot better. And then he can start thinking about shooting 300. One more good shot. That's all he wants. At the start of his push away, he's supporting the ball with his right wrist bent backwards and a lot with his left hand. And as you transfer from the push away to the downswing, the weight of the ball is going to transfer from your starting position to where it's going to be through the majority of your swing. And that transfer is going to be absolutely critical. This next clip is very short, but I want people to see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to play it five times in a row, and then I'm going to discuss it. Notice the transfer of the weight onto his wrist and forearm. This is somewhat an interpretation based on how I do it. But the hardest part of bowling one hand without a thumb is stability. If that ball is not 100% stable in your grasp, it's going to do something you don't want it to do. There are two ways one hand no thumb bowlers have stability at this point in the downswing. Some people use a different method where they're holding on to the ball with their balance arm up to this point, almost sort of like a two-handed does it. I decided to do it the same way Mike Miller does because I bowl with my thumb for decades. And this seemed like an easier transition rather than learning more all the way over from start. The feel of the ball falling into place at this point is essential. For me, on a good shot, it almost feels like I'm catching the ball with my palm and I'm grabbing it. In my opinion, if you are balancing the ball on your forearm or palm, that is unstable. I don't want to balance anything. I want to catch it and grab it. This is the point where he's really locking the ball into place on his wrist, and his wrist is not going to flex forward or back at any point again during his swing until release. Next, I want to look at the amount of flexion he used in his elbow to support the ball. This should be pretty obvious, but the more flexion there is on the elbow, the more the ball will be supported by the forearm and the easier it is to hold. You can see that there is some flexion at the elbow already at this point in the downswing. But then as he gets near the top, he really adds a lot more flexion there. And here he is at the top of his backswing, and you can see that he lets up on that flexion somewhat, and that's actually going to decrease more as he um, goes on the downswing. In my opinion, once you hit the top of the backswing and your arm starts to go forward, then as long as you remain locked on with your wrist on the ball, you really don't need to have flexion in the elbow because, you know, your arm's going forward, so you don't need to support it so much anymore. If you do a comparison to Tom Doherty, you can notice a lot less flexion in the elbow, and I think that's just Tom being a bigger guy who doesn't need to flex the elbow as much to support the ball. You can notice that Doherty, just like Mike Miller, locks the ball into place pretty early on, and you don't see that wrist really moving at all. 
So the benefit to added elbow flexion is stability, but it can come at the price of limiting the backswing and thus reducing speed. So if you are someone who's doing this and you're, you need to have that extra elbow flexion in order to maintain stability, then you're going to have to look for another way to get some additional speed. Will we have our second consecutive 300 in two years here in Reno? In that final shot of Mike Miller's 300 game, the TV gave us a great angle at a swing plane. Notice how straight and proper the swing plane is. The swing plane with bowling without your thumb should be, in my opinion, the same as if you're bowling with your thumb. It shouldn't be flailing out to the right with someone doing something weird because they're trying to balance the ball on their palm. I'm going to pause it here so you can look at the spine tilt he has when the ball is on its backswing. Notice there's an exaggerated spine tilt compared to someone who's bowling with their thumb. If you're bowling with the thumb, you're going to hold the ball down lower and the ball has to clear your legs on the backswing. If you don't have your thumb in, you're going to be cradling the ball more, it's going to be higher up, and you don't have, just have to clear the legs, you have to clear the hips. So you, you're going to see these exaggerated spine tilts compared to someone using their thumb in people who are good without using their thumb. Now look at the spine tilt that he has going into his release. I'm going to stop it right there. Getting into a finished position like this is not easy. You need to be athletic. You need to do stretching exercises. And it's hard to do this consistently. And this is something that I'm trying to work on myself right now. And this is exaggerated spine tilt compared to what you see in most people who are using their thumb. But the spine tilt allows you to kind of cradle the ball underneath your shoulder during the swing to maintain balance. And it also allows you to get down deeper at the foul line to just get more leverage and speed on the ball. So thanks everyone for watching. In summary, we can see that some of the points were a modified grip to allows him to hold on to the ball better and just sticking the fingers all the way in there. Locking the ball into place pretty early into the swing, not playing any balancing game that I see a lot of no thumb bowlers do. Elbow flexion to maintain control. Does not need to maintain that elbow flexion once the arm goes forward. His extra spine tilt on the, on the back swing so the ball can clear the hips. And then there's also spine tilt, extra spine tilt at the release point, which I think allows you to get down further, get more leverage on the ball, more power, more speed. Also, that spine tilt allows you to maintain this position of the ball being cradled under the shoulder, which um, allows for better control. I by no means believe I know everything about bowling this way, nor do I believe that all of these points are universals that anyone who's bowling one you know, hand without their thumb needs to follow all of these. However, I think if you look at lots of people who are really good bowling this way, you're going to be seeing that they're following a lot of these, especially having some way of maintaining really firm control on the ball and that extra spine tilt.